Hey folks, so we're going to get started um, making some components for the chair. And like we said, in the book, we've actually made the arms and the crest from green wood. And those are probably the things that you'd start out making, um, at least rough shaping and letting them dry. And then the next step would be doing all the turnings so they can dry. Um, and then obviously the last bit is going to be the seat um, before joining it all together. So, we want to make our arms and crest from the same material as the seat. Um, so, our first job for this make is going to be the turnings. And before we do that, we just want to get set in our minds and your minds exactly what shape these bits of wood need to be. So, a lot of that is defined by the tenons. So, we've got tenons on the ends of the legs going into the seat. Um, so these are tapered tenons um, and then the same with the arms um, so the arm has got the arm post at the front um, and the back post or crest post going into the crest at the back here and these both have got tapered joints going into the seat all of the spindles at the back taper into the seat um, and everything up is just straight right yes um, and I suppose strength-wise, those don't need to taper, um, mostly because the arm is coming down onto, what do we call that, shouldered tenons? Yeah. Um, so we've turned beads onto these components, um, and the arms compress down onto that. Then, as you can see, the crest holds the spindles in place with these pegs. Mm -hmm. um, we have actually pegged the tapered joints down the bottom here. So where they're not pegged, all the other tapered joints are wedged, um, so these are wedged from underneath and the, the legs are wedged from the top. Okay, so that's just a brief overview. We will um, obviously go into more detail for each component as we're making them. Um, we have uh, the same size tenons for the um, arm posts. Uh, so arm post, crest post, those go in at the same size. These ones go in slightly smaller, um, and then the biggest uh, tapered joints are the leg tenons. We're going to start looking at the tapered joints first. Don't worry so much about these straight ones. Um, just for the record, I think these are like 10 or 12 mil. That's 16 mil. These are, are these 10 mil, 12 mil? We've got a thing. I think they look like 12. Yeah, so these go in at 12 mil is nice and strong. A lot of chairs will go down to like 8mm, yeah. 8 millimeter. It did, but yeah, we've got three twelves there. If you wanted to use, you know, add that together, you've got three quarters of an inch of hard wood there. If yeah. you've got loads and loads of spindles, you can go a lot smaller because you just times how many 8 mils you've got and you end up with a big piece of wood still. Exactly, and I think our thinking when we're designing this chair was leaving them thicker because it's easier for turning, yeah. apart from anything else. Um, the thinner the tenons get, the more the bits of wood flex and flap about. Okay, so tapered joints um, are a bit of a mystery uh, to people. I think the thing that's great about tapered joints is actually, to a certain extent, you don't need to get too caught up in the numbers. Um, but what's really handy is to get to grips with the actual tools that you've got. So. Um, the ones that we've got, I'll just grab the box. Um, we're not sponsored yet. <laughs> so is this a Veritas one? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we have a tenon cutter that goes with the reamer. Um, so the tenon cutter, um, which we actually use for the stool project as well, so for the frame stool that we made, um, we have this, it's like a pencil sharpener, you just spin on the bit of wood and it cuts a conical tenon and that matches the reamer and the reamer cuts a conical hole. So you need to drill a hole to start um, and then you place the reamer in and it can enlarge the hole into this nice conical shape. Um, so we've talked you through why we think tapering joints are good now we need to look at how you can get control over these tapers um, and make sure that you get things the right size. 
So, what's our first step? We need to make sure that these two correspond with each other. Right, OK. Um, I, I suppose it's worth pointing out that actually, um, even for you guys, you may have different reamers. Um, so it's worth setting up for your own reamer. Yes. And the best way to do that is by starting with a hole w made with the reamer. Yeah. Um, so we're going to do this one at 16. So this is going to be a leg tenon template or a mortise block. Great. And it's worth doing it into the plank that you've got. And then, then you know that you're kind of dealing with similar kind of thicknesses. When you drill in at an angle, you are going in slightly, you, you're having a tenon that's slightly longer, right? Mm -hmm. um, but we just drill straight down for this. Um, yeah. And then it actually makes quite a useful little um, jig that yes. uh, Robin has um, introduced us to, which works miracles on the lathe. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's get that drilled. You want me to hold that? Yes, Here, please. Great. Uh, and then we'll get it reamed. Mm -hmm. Right, okay, so uh, let me just clamp this. There we go, great. So the, it can be tricky to ream holes, right? Like yeah. you have to make sure that you're going in evenly. Yeah. How can you do that? Uh, you can flip the board over and have a look to see if the point's right in the centre of the hole. Right, you okay. could ream to a right angle there. Yeah. And a right angle there. Mm-hmm. Uh, the main point, you, you aren't in a rush. If you try and do this quickly, you, it's easy to make a mistake. And I suppose it should be taking a fairly even shaving all the way around. Yes. If you notice that you're just taking a shaving from one side, then that's probably a telltale sign that um, yeah. it's wonky. And you might just, every now and again, want to take it out because these start to block up and make it very difficult to cut. And just feel, you can actually see inside, it makes a lovely smooth surface, a bit like a cabinet scraper. If you look at the smooth surface inside the hole that you're creating, once that gets to the bottom, you know you've, you've reamed the entire hole. What you can do is you can measure, it's a 16 millimetre hole that we've drilled, so we will measure 16 where this is 16 millimetres thick, there. OK, so you've, you've set that 16 mil, have you? Yep. Yeah, great. I'm going to put a mark mm -hmm. there, just a little dot, and I'm going to look at the thickness of the board. They are really useful reamers for this. They're quite easy to leave a little mark on. Yep. Um, and actually, so it's worth bearing in mind that um, this, this is for an estimate and there is a very cool and clever way um, of reaming to fit when you're doing the final fit. And that's yeah. actually, I think that is basically the chair maker's secret, really. It's yeah. certainly where symmetry comes into your chair. So if yeah. You're reaming, I think, yeah. Okay, so that's so set to that the is, thickness. Yeah, that's the thickness of our plank. So we can take that up. Measuring from our original dot. Okay. So from our original dot, we'll measure back the length, sorry, the width of the plank, or the thickness. And that's basically where we want to ream to. Yeah. Doesn't need to be crazy accurate. That's the beauty of taper joints, is exactly. the thing that needs to be accurate is the taper, not necessarily the diameter exactly. or the depth. No. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. So let's have a look. Do you reckon we've reamed too far already? Oh, no, we're no <laughs> way near. About brilliant. halfway. Well done, you. Can tell you've done this a few times. Yeah. So that's pretty much Down there, right? Down to our right? green line, yep. Perfect. Okay. One tapered hole. Okay, so what's worth pointing out is um, you have to try quite hard to make sure that this goes in smoothly into the hole. You don't want it wobbling about. Yeah, it's the, the last couple of turns when, it, when it's got uh, contact with the hole of the board is... 
you need a little bit of strength, but you'll be okay. And you can check by having it poking out the other end, there shouldn't be any gaps. Um, so if there are gaps at the thin end, then that's user error and that's caused by it wobbling. If that end is kind of wobbling around, then it's going to create a larger hole than it's meant to. Exactly. It is really important this stage that you get a really good hole. Yeah. Um, so it's worth maybe trying a couple of times, practicing a few Practice, times. Yeah. Um, and then what we're really doing now <coughs> is checking that our tenon cutter is going to make a tenon that perfectly matches our reamed hole. Um, so if you just have a quick look close here, you'll see that it is actually adjustable. Um, and that does make a significant difference. So um, by adjusting this, we can make sure that the taper we're creating is identical to our reamed hole. And that's really important. Um, and it will help us figure out a few bits and bobs for the chair as we're going along. So our next step is going to be making a tapered tenon um, to try out our reamed hole um, and check that our tenon cutter is working. So we're going to make a tapered tenon um, using our tenon cutter. We'll probably do it on the lathe as well. Um, and I think that'll be a really interesting thing for you to see. It'll check that we've got this accurately set up um, and then we'll be able to get all of our joints nice and neat and tight. Thank you.